Welcome back to AppliedLinearAlgebra.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to eigenvalue modeling by inspecting a two-mass, three-spring system. Here's our ideal diagram of this system with spring one, mass one, spring two, mass two, and spring three. On the left-hand side, we see that we've attached a metric ruler. We position the zero measurement at the top of our system. The reference direction for positive position moves down away from the zero position. And on the metric ruler, we mark that center position of mass 1, labeling it x1. The center of mass 2, we label x2. Let's create a vector model to capture the equilibrium position of each mass when no external forces are applied. Consider x0 storing x1 in the first row, x2 in the second row, which is a 2 by 1 vector. We write this in notation, x0 is an element of R2 by 1, meaning it has two rows and one column. Each entry of x0 is a constant real number where x1 marks the position in meters of the center of mass 1 when the system is at rest, and x2 marks the position measurement in meters of the center of mass 2 when the system is at rest. Of course, no external forces are applied. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we apply an external force. Here, we see that the mass is moved, so we mark the center of mass 1 at time t as x1 of t, the center of mass 2 at time t at x2. Let's create a vector valued position function, we'll call it x of t, given by x1 of t, x2 of t, this is a 2 by 1 vector, and we will write it in function notation as a function x that goes from the time interval t0 to capital T into R2. The domain of x of t is a time interval between t0 and t. t0 is the initial time when we start recording position measurements in our system. Capital T is the final time when we stop measuring position data. Of course, both of these are in seconds. Each entry of x of t stores the position function describing the location of the center of mass i along the metric ruler at time t. x1 of t is the position of center of mass 1 in meters at time t seconds. x2 is the position of the center of mass 2 in meters at time t seconds. Let's look back at our diagram. We can now introduce a new function called the displacement function that represents the difference between the equilibrium position and the position at time t. Here, we will draw a reference length between these positions and we'll label it u1 of t, which again is the difference between equilibrium and the position at any time t, measured by this distance. We can do the same thing for the second mass. We measure the distance between equilibrium and any position at time t, and we call the displacement u2 of t. This represents the length between equilibrium and any position. Notice that the displacement functions are positive if and only if the position at time t is below equilibrium. Thus, the reference position points positive in the downward direction as seen here. Now, let's create a function to measure the change in position, aka the displacement of each mass. The vector u of t, whose entries are u1 of t in row 1 and u2 of t in row 2, is given by x1 of t minus x1 in row 1, and x2 of t minus x2 in row 2. With a little mathematical analysis, we see that this is the function x of t minus x0. Notice that we have a scalar input t and vector valued output u of t. Again, we notice that our displacement function u of t has vector valued output, where u goes from t0 to capital T, into R2. 
the domain of u of t is the same as the domain of the position vector x of t. Moreover, we know that u1 given by x1 minus x0 is the displacement of the center of mass 1 from equilibrium at time t, measured in meters. u2 is the displacement of center of mass 2 away from its equilibrium position at time t. Using these parameters, we can state our modeling problem. If we know masses m1, m2, and spring constants k1, k2, and k3, can we generate a model u of t that accurately predicts the behavior of the measured displacement data for these masses? In other words, can we come up with a mathematical function that accurately describes u1 and u2 in our physical system? For more on this, I'll see you in the next video.